if you're going to set out to read a book by Jim Harrison, you need to have at hand a, a fully stocked kitchen and a few bottles of wine at least, because you're going to need them right away if you start reading any of his books. He talks about food. He writes about food in the most extravagant way. It's, it's so titillating. You were recently uh, inducted in the uh, American Academy of Arts and Letters. Yeah. That's a, quite an honor. I suppose so. It was a sort of dreary ceremony. It was more like a college graduation <laughs> exercise, which I never went to, but it was okay. It's not that you're inducted. It's important that if you're not inducted, they're generally... I was in the holding tank for 20 years because I have some opponents on the East Coast for obvious reasons. So, you know, if you've done well in the movie business, what I did, which I did for a while, right. it causes some resentment. You said that driving solo around the country uh, is a lot like gardening or hunting or fishing. You think back on it, what's your favorite road trip? One, I was almost pushed out the door by my wife and secretary. I was an extremist, if you get what I mean. And I think I drove 12,000 miles uh, 39 days, I sort of described the mandala around the whole United States, including going into Mexico on some can a camping trip with Doug Peacock, the grizzly bear guy, and then ending up in Mississippi, then going over to <coughs> South Carolina for the barbecue. I mean, I just <laughs> did the whole circle, and then I was fine. You find yeah. peace there? Yeah, on the road, you know. Oddly enough, a mind doctor, my own, said uh, road trips are good for you because they're a complete acceptance of mortality, a complete abs acceptance of passing time. You know, you accept that life begins here, ends there. Mm -hmm. There's a middle, a late, <laughs> late stage on and on. So it is pleasant because right. you're accepting everything. Jim once said that God gave us the earth and we have metaphorically and actually chewed off the fingers in the hand of the gift giver. And much of your writing explores the cost of modern civilization and as a foil against the natural world. What, is there anything we can do? Well, that's a tough one. Well, things are being done aggressively, but I, I fear in a lot of areas it's too late, which doesn't probably include this area as much as others. Uh, I started a phony organization years ago that I just used. I'm the president of the Christian environmentalists, and this is going doing an end run. So I'd say to ranchers, God, you really don't need to do this or timber people because the earth is the body of God, and you shouldn't defile the body of God. So, in other words, I went right of the right way, you know. It's, yeah, it was yeah. fun. It's sort of, it was quite effective. You've lived uh, a very large, satisfying life that all of us feel like we could. We've, read, we've lived it through your writings, but a large life. Is there anything that you've missed, you think? I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe I haven't... I used to love models and actresses, and maybe there haven't been enough waitresses in my life, I think, <laughs> about that, <laughs> you know? The salmon and steelhead in Idaho continued to struggle, and you were the original eco-terrorist when you blew up... Uh, oh, yeah. In a good day to die, you blew up the North Fork Dam. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, that's very old. That was the first. Ed Abbey later admitted to that I beat him by a couple of years well, on that I think, one. I think, he <coughs> I think he copied you with the monkey all wrench gang. Bit, but all friends copy sure. each other. Yeah. Was there something in the water for you and Hemingway and McGuane and I think Chatham's from Michigan too, isn't he? I mean, what was no, there? California. But no, the three of you are. I mean, you're, the, you're the, the greatest I, writers in water, there. water, you know. I know sometimes, you know, I was just saw Richard Ford again. He went... McGuane and Richard Ford and I went to Michigan State and the people at University of Michigan are saying, why did you go to the Cow College? And I'd say, you people haven't gotten it up since Arthur Miller. I said, we went to Michigan State because it was easier. 
<laughs> you didn't have to work so hard. You could learn to be a novelist, you know? No, none of us ever took any writing courses, of course, <laughs> not, you know? What, what gives you that inspiration? Is it just being in the moment and having the opportunity to I don't have any room? idea. That's the totality of the person, you know, from mm -hmm. age three. And also much like the chaos theory, depending on accident. The fact that, uh, no, I lived in an egg family. There are hundreds and thousands of books all over. You start that way, you know. You know, just an obsession with the written word. You know, much of the work you've written has affected my life. Is there any work that you read that's affected your life? Well, a lot, a lot of work, sort of. But it's like Noni, as the old Latin historian said, I have made a heap of all I have met. So it comes, you know, I loved it when I went to Russia in the 70s and could see where Dostoevsky and you seen and lived. And, I loved that when I first drove to Mississippi in the 70s uh, to see where uh, Faulkner lived or went to the parts of uh, southern Massachusetts on the coast where Moby Dick. So it's all, it all makes, it's all part of the same stew. Thank you, Jim. Really tough. Thank you. We very much appreciated your time. Right. Sir, it was great. We look forward it to your comments too tonight. Oh, it's great. Absolutely.